welcome to this episode of Brews and Cruise, where we will be discussing everything from beers, alcohols, cars, boats, motorcycles. You never know what it might be. However, today I got my first guest, and it is my lovely wife, Stephanie. Hello. And we are drinking a Breckenridge Christmas Ale. And this is the one that you picked out. Yes. So, have a taste first. Cheers. That's a good one. Now, mm -hmm. first off, why did you pick the Breckenridge Christmas Ale? Because it's like Christmas in a bottle. <laughs> Just like Christmas in a bottle. Now, mm -hmm. the first thing I noticed when I have this is I noticed that I got a little hint of chocolate, I think, and maybe a little bit of caramel, which would make sense for the Christmas time. But uh, where did you first have this? At um, at River City Grill in Winona, Minnesota. Okay. So that's a, that's a local place for anybody that doesn't know. It is River City Grill. And it is the Christmas ale, which we had one time last year. And like she said, it is like Christmas in a bottle. And this comes from Breckenridge, which is a Colorado brewery. And it is coming in right over 7% alcohol. And it tastes like Christmas in a bottle, like I said. This one's kind of warm tasting, but it's better when it's cold. And I can only imagine what that brewery is like. Because you and me, we like to go to breweries a lot. Mm -hmm. um, around this area, which one's your favorite? Island City Brewery. Island City here in Winona. That one doesn't take very long. It's only a few blocks away from here. Right. Now, we normally will take maybe a car ride or a motorcycle trip to ones that are in the Minnesota area within about a 45 minute trip. Mm -hmm. Which one's your favorite there? Cause the one that I first think of when I go is I like Karst, which is in fountain, but I also am taking a liking to Sylvan, which is in Lanesboro, Minnesota, which I, that one's kind of cool. Cause it's got like an old grain factory. So that's kind of fun. I think the way they redid it is cool, but, uh, that's one of my favorites. I can only imagine what it's like to go to Breckenridge and tr uh, check this one out. But which one's your favorite that we go to on a regular basis? I mean, there's also Rochester, too. So, um, Well, I think they're all great in their own way because they all have different things to offer. Yeah. But I would say um, I really enjoy Sylvan as well. But I, I actually enjoy them all for different reasons. Well, the one uh, we were like just... In Rochester, there's Forager. Like forager. Forager is good because they got great food. Now you and me, we went and saw your dad play guitar about a week after our wedding, and that was at Sylvan, and that was that's cool. I don't know. There's something about Lanesboro in the summer, which is fun because it's a very bicyclist, touristy area, but it's a really small town. Mm -hmm. And having a brewery in that town, which it seems like all these small places, all these small towns have one brewery. And then there's us in Winona with a town of roughly 30,000 people, and we have only one. I feel like there should be more, but again, I don't know what the business aspect is like that in the brewery scene. But Sylvan's a great one, and Forager in, in Rochester is always a fun one, too, because their food is fantastic. And they always have live music, almost like five days a week. So I like that. Now, the other question I have, let's go back to the car section. What is, of my collection of cars, which one's your favorite? Your Challenger. Your Black Challenger. My Black Challenger. And that one's right in the back if you can't see it. It's in the back far right corner there. It's a 2009. It's a Dodge Challenger, and it's an SRT8. Now, back in 2009, the SRT was the top of the line, and since then they've made so many different types of Challenger models. You have anywhere from the typical V6s, which I don't know if you count that as a muscle car, but maybe. Then you have the V8s, and now you have the Scat Packs, the 392s, the Hellcats, the Demon. There's so many different ones out there, but the one that I have was what to you? Why is that one so special to Stephanie? Well, I think it looks nice, and then we also had our first date in that car. Picked so me up from, <laughs> so my, from my house. So which 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 is better, the the story that it has or the looks of it? Both. Both. Or was it me that was in there? Was that the special? All three. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
<laughs> okay. So, anyways, we had our first date in it, and I picked you up, and that was how many years ago now? It will, this May will be ten years ago. So when I first picked you up, mm-hmm. when you saw the car, what'd you think? Did you think it was just a typical car, or was it like, no. oh wow, that's pretty cool? I thought, wow, look at this guy. Rolling up with his guns guy. hanging out in his fancy car. But Yeah, well No, yeah. I I just I thought it was really nice looking and I don't know. I I didn't think much of it after a few seconds, but you know, all in all I think it's a great car and then we had a lot of every time we'd meet on our Tuesday dates for the next year, you'd pick me up and we'd go to the movie theater and in that car. So That's right because you moved to Sparta, Wisconsin within mm-hmm. the first week or two of us dating, and then we would meet on Tuesdays for the old five dollar movies. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I would that's right, I would drive the Challenger down there. It was better on gas, obviously, yeah, than what I normally have. So, anyways, were you a car girl growing up at all, or not really? No, not really. No, dad, mom, no one had like a special car. My mom probably had more special cars than anybody, she'd always have a convertible of some kind. She had a Ford Mustang um, when I was a teenager, and then she had a BMW. I don't know the all the Let me models, take a guess. Let me take a guess. guess. What did it look like in your mind? It was Z something. Ah, uh, the Z. I think it's a Z3. It's the one that looks like a Mazda Miata. Kind of. A little two-seater yeah. convertible. Yeah. Yeah, that's probably, I think... They're called the Z3s, if I remember right, because my, well, Justin was looking at one one time back Mm -hmm. four years ago, but then it ended up with a Miata. That's okay, because sometimes those cars can be a little finicky when it comes to maintenance. I just didn't know that she was so good at driving a stick shift. Oh, she had a stick shift? Oh, yeah. In that one, too, or both? She's always had a stick shift car up until I think I was a teenager. Well, that's interesting because mm-hmm. that's kind of gone to the wayside. However, our parents are in their sixties, so that was her dad actually. When she got him, she got him a car, or he got her a car when she was sixteen. Tra- um, brought her to a parking lot and left her there. And he said, "All right, figure it out. <laughs> when you figure it out, you can come home." And she had to teach herself how to drive a stick to get home. Well, that's so. you know that's what parents would do. My dad did the that same was thing back in the, you know late 60s so late 60s well early 70s early 70s my mom recalled when she had one she had one where it had three on the tree where you had stick shift was on Mm. the tree now i've never seen one or driven one of those before but i guess they were pretty common back in the 60s i want to say my mom had the same thing and grandpa juice he forced her to figure it Mm -hmm. out too because she was grinding gears probably like your mom was and he just said well once you learn it you'll figure it out if you want to get going and just the way it was. My dad was kind of the same way. I had a um, 99 Trans Am when I was 18, I want to say. And I didn't understand how stick shifts worked. I just wanted one. And I learned the hard way. Not that I was grinding gears, but <laughs> this is the funny part. When he taught me, he said, okay, you put the clutch in. And then you let it out. And you obviously shift. I'm like, okay, sounds good. I didn't realize what it took to get back to first gear. I didn't realize when the stick is in the middle and it's, you know, it's like kind of wobbling, you can kind of push it back and forth. I didn't realize I was in neutral. So I thought when I got up to like, let's just say six gear, which is the top gear on most uh, manuals nowadays, I thought I had to go shift back down to fifth, back down to fourth, back down to third, back to second, back to first before I got to the stoplight. I'm like, this will just take forever. This sounds like a terrible car that I bought. However, I didn't realize you could just pop it into neutral and coast all the way to the stoplight or wherever you're going to, and then you can just put the clutch in and put it into first gear. Mm -hmm. So now, have you had any stick shift cars yourself? No, I learned for the military, but the only stick shift or manual of anything was motorcycles. uh, In the military, what did you have to drive? Well, when we were preparing for a deployment, I I didn't know how to drive a stick shift car, so... They, they teach you there during trainings. Oh, they force you to mm-hmm. learn that. Okay, yeah. gotcha. So you well, do you remember what you learned on? Or was it... It some was some small SUV. I'm not quite sure. Oh, okay. So I had to teach Dave how to do that when we t- uh, dealt with cars down in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, we were at a Kia dealership. And I, had to, I taught him how to drive a stick shift in case someone wanted to buy a stick shift Kia Soul. Mm-hmm. Same thing. Took him to a parking lot. <laughs> 
showed them what to do, and it was a dead day. It's probably a Monday or Tuesday where nobody's buying cars. Everyone's at work. So I taught him how to drive a stick shift right there in the parking lot. How long lot. did it take him? <laughs> Half hour, I would say. Yeah. He wasn't real fluid at first, but now he knows because here's another funny story. The same car that I learned how to drive stick on, I tried to teach him how to drive stick on it, and it was a V8 Trans Am. I tried to teach him how to do it in the middle of the night in a small town outside of Winona. <laughs> and he had us going like this. <laughs> And he pulled out in front of a car, and we almost got side swiped, almost got T-boned, and I was in the passenger seat. Oh, that yes. was back when we were in college. So then when we moved down to Atlanta, then I taught him, and it probably took him a half hour because the Kia Soul is a pretty easy car to learn on. It was a five-speed. Their clutch is really easy. You get a sports car, totally different because you got more horsepower. So that was, you know, that's how he learned, and I learned as well on a V8. So... The next question I have is, your mom had these cars. Mm -hmm. Did you? Did your dad have any, or was your dad into something else? Uh, mm, I'm not quite sure. No. Yeah, I, I know he had a lot of motorcycles. Okay. Through my life, and he was into motorcycles before. He would just have to be a guest for you to ask those things too, because. I'm just not quite sure. That's okay. I can get him on here. That's not a problem. Okay. I know where he lives. So okay. your dad was more into motorcycles. Yes. Okay. what I know. He did have 1950-something, kind of like one in the back here, but... Oh, a fi uh, 50s car? Yeah. Oh, he did. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know that. Your dad's never really talked to me about anything other than motorcycles. Mm -hmm. But that's because he's now in the Speakeasy crew, so it's a different sure. story. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so your dad was more into motorcycles. Do you remember which ones he kind of had? Anything stick out in your mind? Um, probably the one that sticks out the most was he had a, I believe it was a Harley, but it was a custom, a custom build for him, and it was yellow. I don't know all the ins and outs about it, but I just remember that was the one he was probably the most proud of. And it, it was very fast and it was very loud, but I enjoyed it. Me, my brother and I rode on it quite a bit. So oh, with him? Mm -hmm. Was that when you were just kids? We were, I'd say, I was maybe twelve. Oh, okay. So it was a while ago. Yeah. Because now that I know, now he's had. Well, she's had a few, but now I know he had two Harley V rods, and he also has one of the 2018 Honda Gold Wings, and mm -hmm. that is automatic. So that's weird to me. Mm -hmm. Now, you said the only car or vehicle you've ever had stick shift was a motorcycle. Correct. Okay. Well, yes, yeah, so most every motorcycle is. So what What was your first motorcycle then? It was a Kawasaki Ninja 300. Nice. I remember yeah. that one. What color was it? It was uh, white. Yeah. White and green and black. Yeah, white, green, and black. Those mm -hmm. kind of your colors. You like that white and black yeah. accents. Mm -hmm. And then a little green Ninja sticker yep, on it that was really nice i remember uh well we i remember is because what's the one that's below that uh, well they have 250s okay i remember when i was like oh i should have 250 and you said 250s are for wimps <laughs> so i said i'll do it one step up then i'll get a 300 you know now i don't think they even make 250s anymore i think they're all 300s so you're and i remember you took me to a parking lot and you made me just do it yeah it was good times and then you learned it real quick yeah, you're like all right see you at home so the one thing about that is my first motorcycle was a Kawasaki Ninja as well. It mm -hmm. was a 636. It was a 2005, 2006, it was a 636. That had a more aggressive stance. So I thought when I was going to test drive you, yours like we did up in the cities, in Minneapolis it is, um, I thought it was going to be a really aggressive stance. But actually they sit more upright. So there's something different about the Kawasaki Ninjas compared to a Kawasaki Ninja RR, like a race replica. So the race replicas, I believe, have more of an aggressive stance. Yours was actually very comfortable. I enjoyed riding yours. So I rode it a couple times. So you had that bike, and then you got rid of it. Why did you get rid of that bike specific? Um, I think I just wanted a Harley. I don't really remember. Yeah. The exact reason. I suppose everyone wants to graduate to a Harley. Mm -hmm. So what did you have? I had a Harley Davidson 48. F okay. So it's a Sportster 48, if I remember right. Mm -hmm. Had a 1,200cc. It had Vance and Hines. It had different handlebars on it. And 
it just wasn't i mean after my back injury it just wasn't overly comfortable yeah but it was a nice smaller bike and it was well taken care of by the previous owner i remember we went and looked at it in buffalo city wisconsin mm -hmm. and it was in pristine condition mm -hmm. looking back on it probably should have kept it but it, it's, yeah. it is what it is you can get another one anytime you want but uh yeah, for the for it, how well it was taken care of, I feel like the person that I sold it to got a really good deal because it was low miles and I mean it was just in perfect condition. Those vans and it was a nice, loud, aggressive bike. It was it was good. Those vans and Heinz were loud. I mm -hmm. remember at our old house, it was just crazy. If we turned that thing on, it was you're waking Louder up the than neighbors. Your bikes. <laughs> Hey. I know the loudest bike I've ever had was my Indians that I had and that I put the Reinhardt slip-ons on. I don't know if yours had just slip-ons, but I feel mm -hmm. like yours was fully done, right? They were the whole thing. Yeah, that's that's what makes them even louder is when they put the headers on and they redo the whole thing. Yeah. I remember I drove that bike home for you from Buffalo City. It drove pretty nice. It was definitely smaller feeling, so I wasn't really sure how to feel about the handlebars because I'm not used to having, like, the – they had kind of mini ape hangers, not really – but I've never had anything besides stock handlebars and anything I've ever had. So I think it's because they were just like the right setting to yeah. where you feel comfortable, but it's like your that. arms aren't in midair, but they're not super low. Yeah. It's, it was just nice. But I think the reason you drove it home for me was because the windy roads <laughs> and yep. there was a lot of gravel and I didn't want to wipe it out the first day that's so. a smart move yeah. yeah there was a detour that's right because they're between mm -hmm. fountain city and so uh, they had road construction yep. i remember driving that it was a little shaky at first because i wasn't used to it and uh, you know your brother had me drive his cycle which he has many eight well i don't know if they're mini apes they're, oh, they're pretty high they're like this and i'm just not used to that i'm used to being here kind of whatever the stock comes with that's what i always kept down mm -hmm. there i've never had any ape hangers or anything like that I, I just I don't know when you have a fairing since I have the street glide the CVO street glide when you have your hands here you have the fairing which is taking care of all that wind if you get the ape hangers you're up and above the windshield which to me defeats the purpose of the fairing other than for your body and a little bit of your face so that's why I never really cared much for him but you know your brother was telling me he's like well I I drove because he drove mine that time then too he goes my arms were getting numb and I don't know what that's from I've never had numb arms by riding a cycle and he said up here was more comfortable and I didn't believe him at first I was like, it seems really weird that my hands up here would be more comfortable. Mm -hmm. So I didn't think that was actually the case until I wrote it. And I'm like, you know what? This is somewhat comfortable. It's not what I prefer. But I do know that when I was backing out and doing tighter turns with the apes, it was a lot easier to maneuver because my hands aren't out here. They're more like right here. So I could maneuver right. better. I would agree. I had, I enjoyed that aspect when I drove his bike. But other than that, it didn't feel right. But then the again. Because your, your bodies get used to certain things. Yeah. And you were used to it lower, and he's used to it higher. And I think if you probably rode with it higher later you, for a while, it's just you'd probably prefer. Well, I see everyone on Facebook. They're getting ape hangers. So it must be a thing. People just must love them. It must be their preference. So I don't know. That's just what I don't like. Yeah. So now trans transitioning on, we've talked about cars, talked about motorcycles a little bit. Of the two, what do you prefer? If, if, you, if I said, hey, honey, you can have a car or a motorcycle. Which one are you doing? Car or motorcycle? Oh, car for sure. Car for sure. Okay. Yeah. So what kind of car? Where are we going here? Are we going like dream car? Are we dream going like duh. Dream car, of course. I don't see mine aren't like this the most lavish That's okay. I don't know. It's I your dream car. It's not anyone else's dream car. Yeah. What are you picking? I w I don't know. I'd probably pick like a uh, Rubicon of some sort. A Rubicon? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Huh. I don't want, I mean, now with my back injury, I don't want some low Lamborghini to the ground. Sure, like, sure. Or maybe if there would be anything, it'd be like a nicer, luxurious SUV of some kind. But So a Jeep, a Jeep, well, Wrangler, you're talking about Jeep Wrangler Rubicons, what Correct. you're talking about. Yeah. Why that? Why is that the like dream car? I you can car? do things with all seasons. It's... You know, it gets around well in the winter time. Big tires, and um, in the summer you can take the tops off and the back off. And um, I just like the look of them. I think they're they hold their value. And that's true. They do. 
they're just an all over. You can do so many things with them. They're so versatile. You can I mean, tow with them. I love that aspect too. I love the fact that you can take the roof off in the summer and still have it. And they and also driving with the doors off. I think is a neat feature of any vehicle. That does sound. I mean, fun. that's not a normal thing. So having that is kind of interesting. I'm surprised that's actually legal to do that. Yeah. It just seems weird, but then again, we have motorcycles, and every to most people, those seem really, really dangerous. Right. And they probably are if they're abused, obviously. But driving with the doors off seems like it seems like a standard of some sort is broken from the law, but it's not, and that's cool. Another dream car would probably be an old Ford pickup, <clears throat> like 1950s something, nicely redone yeah. with the wood in the back of the of the. T- um, the truck bed and everything is like really nicely redone. I think that would be a dream vehicle. I think those are really cool. Well, I know every time we go to auctions that you always eye those ones up, whether it's yeah. a Chevy or a Ford, you're always eyeing yeah, up a fifties because truck. They're, Cause they're sweet. So whenever I think of a fifties truck, I always think of last man standing, Tim Allen yeah. and the green truck. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's <laughs> what I think of. It's like, and they're then a fantastic. wood and then a wood box in the back. Absolutely. I feel like that would be hard to take care of, but you couldn't haul. I don't know. I just, I think they're like the staple of a, um, Americana. America. Oh, really? Yeah. It's like old American things like picnics and 4th of July and fifties. Yeah. I don't know. I just, I find it very fascinating and, um, I just like the look of them. Well, I, that's very true. I really don't feel like people. I don't. I don't feel like the car manufacturers make cars unique like they did back in the day. Like, like when I think of my grandpa going to work back in the day, mm-hmm. like he probably got up in his old pickup truck with his lunchbox and went <laughs> to work. I just. I think there's something about them that holds a lot of nostalgia for a lot of people in different age ranges and i i like them a lot well i think that's true too because you can think of movies back in the day too Mm -hmm. every you know james bond had unique cars whether they were um, american ones or whether they were foreign ones they had unique cars uh you you just think of you know the fast and the furious you go all the way up to that and now you're talking about foreign cars of like the japanese style which became humongous when we were in high school i mean everyone wanted a foreign japanese car and, you know, Fast and the Furious made them <clears throat> really popular. But I, mean, I find all those, ca- I like all cars for what they are and they, their own, they hold their own values yeah. and I appreciate them all. So it's, it's kind of just depends on what kind of feel you're going for. Yeah. Well, I, I totally understand that too, because <clears throat> cars can make you feel a certain way. Mm-hmm. They can make you feel fast. They can make you feel luxurious it just all depends on what we're talking about yeah. and i you know i go b- <clears throat> thinking back to your grandpa driving his uh you know you think about the truck you're thinking about grandpa going to work with this i'm assuming a metal lunch box back yeah, in the day exactly. working maybe in a factory and totally different types of jobs than we have mm-hmm. nowadays i mean look at here we're podcasting totally different types of work and <clears throat> then you think of anything else i mean cars that we had in high school I'm now starting to see when I see kids rolling around the high school kids. I now I see like a certain type of car that kids are rolling around in. When we were in high school, it seemed like everyone had a Pontiac Grand Prix or a Pontiac Grand Am. It always seemed like I had one of those. Which one? I had a Grand Prix. <laughs> that was like the one. standard. It was the best. Yeah. Though. It had the handlebars or the handlebars the. The door handles to get in were on the side of the car. Oh, that's versus unique. Like, and then, you know, sure. the traditional. And it had speed in the um, in the window. Oh, in the, the, the you know. Um, what's the it heads-up display? Mm-hmm. It was in the, in the front? Yeah. Really? The thing was a beast. I could I get around that. any sn- – I, I never got stuck in the snow. It, like, any time it would break down, my dad would fix it, it which was, wasn't very often – but when it did, it, yeah. it lasted me a long, long time. Well, yeah, I remember seeing those all around our parking lot at the 
at our public school there when we were in high school and it was just Grand Prix, Grand Dams, it seemed like. But then if someone was into like the Fast and the Furious movies, like I was saying, because when we went to high schools from 2002 to 2006, we graduated in, and right then is when that Fast and the Furious was taken off. I mean, they had about three movies within that time of our high school almost. And if you were into those, I remember seeing Acura Integras. And the first thing everyone would modify would be the muffler or the exhaust. So everybody where I went to school had Dodge Neons, was it? That was another one. And c- somebody told me that they were like Lego cars. <laughs> Why? So because they, they were easy to like piece together. They, they weren't like bolted in a lot of the times. They were like, oh. maybe I'm getting this totally wrong. But it's possible. They were, they were just easy to handle. And a lot of guys like to modify those well, vehicles. That was the whole thing is everyone wanted to modify it to make it fast and the furious mm-hmm. and they wanted to sound like ying, 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 ying. they wanted that sound. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of those foreign cars and the Dodge Neon were like that because Dodge Neon uh they came out with an SRT4 which is like the SRT8 Challenger that I have that you love. Yep. SRT4 had a turbocharged. Now back in 2004 5 I that was about the area when those came out. Turbo wasn't the biggest thing back then, and it was kind of a unique thing. So that was the the top-of-the-line Neon, because Neon was also made by Plymouth, which is obviously the same company. But every, obviously, Plymouth was a lower brand than Dodge. So if you had the Dodge Neon, you were a little bit higher up, and then the Dodge Neon also had the SRT4, which had the turbocharged, because my cousin had one of those. And people would modify those things left and right, and I think that was kind of the whole thing with they were an affordable car all these cars that when we were in high school that were on fast and the furious were pretty affordable cars nowadays i mean you can't even get an accurate integra unless it's all torn to pieces uh you can look on facebook marketplace and it's hard to come buy any of those things and even if you do come buy those things they are now an arm and a leg um you know you're talking like ten thousand dollars for a pile of junk so i don't know but yeah i remember that people would I had Underglow on my cars, too, and it was Underglow is still cool to me. I still think Underglow is so cool. So I don't know if anybody... I actually thought Underglow is really neat in um, on motorcycles. Yeah, they like do. Like, it lights up the engine. Yep. And then a little bit underneath. Most every uh, motorcycle place will put those on for you if you want to. It's just like LED strips. Yeah. See, now, when we were back in high school, mm-hmm. they were a neon bulb that you put underneath. (laughs) So you had two long ones, which went on the side skirts, and then you had uh, shorter ones for the front and the back. And I remember my cousin, I had a 2004 Toyota Celica, and my cousin and I, we (laughs) went to his garage at his parents' house, and he had these nice gold drill... Which cousin was it? Mitchell. Oh, okay. He had these gold drill bits, and on the bottom of my car, it was actually coated, so it it had like this uh, powder coating sealant on the bottom so it wouldn't get salty and he would go underneath and he was drilling up and he was busting every damn drill bit that he had and he went through almost every drill bit and eventually by the end of the night we got the underglow on but he was out of drill bits i think i probably bought him some after that but it was so funny because he's like what is under the bottom of this car because it was kind of new at that point we didn't really have powder coating or anything like that for the most part underneath cars to just keep the salt away up here in Minnesota. And he went through almost every drill bit, but we finally got the blue on, and all we had was blue. And then as the years went on, you could get a remote control and get the other ones, and you could just have it whatever color you wanted. You know what else I thought was neat was when people would put the lights on the inside of their car? Yeah. So then you're like feet glue? I know. Like the red or the green or blue or something? Yeah, Brett used to have... Um, a Ford Escort, and he I think he did the same thing. He had the underglow on the bottom, mm-hmm. but then inside he had the blue lights. Yeah, like put the strips in and everything would light up. Remember my Raptor had that, my white Ford Raptor. Yeah, yeah. They had those. Someone installed those mm-hmm. in there. But see, now they had, neat look. they had the cheap version that you get from like Kmart or Shopco. You just plugged it into the AC. Right, that's, the, that's the kind. <laughs> You just got to do that. <laughs> the best kind where they're hooked up to your battery so you don't see the wires because remember you had to charge your phone, don't forget. Well, just get an adapter. <laughs> just get adapters. <laughs> just have it looking like there's surgery yeah, going that's, on. Well, that's the nostalgia. Just the cheap crap that you plug in and you get from Kmart. Do you remember going to the uh, sections in any any department store and you go yes. to the car section? Yes. All the and cheap you're like, what shit can I put in, in my car to make it look cool? I yeah, I know. Seat covers. I still do. Uh, steering wheel covers. 
everything mm -hmm. plugins that lit up it was yeah and then the, i remember if if you were really cool you had a screen in your car that would pop up from the d or from the cd player <laughs> and it'd yeah. pop up and go like this yep that was so cool if you had one of those boy you were living large nowadays they're just standard in every car mm -hmm. i think the new toyota's just came out like the the sequoia i think has a 12 inch screen now that's i huge. remember when i had a radio that or a stereo system and it had like dolphins oh in the yes screen and then it had little things that went i saw that, that on tiktok the other day it said you were i it was like you're old if you know what this was and it was the <laughs> yeah. dolphins jumping across mm -hmm. in like eight bit form <laughs> yeah those, those are great i know because then you, then you could switch that to different uh yeah. things every so often I remember one time I was in college and I came home for the summer and I, I went to a pawn shop and I bought a screen. Somehow it fit identically to my Chrysler 300C. And boy, I, they had, I had someone hook it up for me where it bypassed whatever safety regulation there was so I could slip a DVD in there and watch whatever was happening on the screen. And I thought I was really, I thought it was pretty cool. I don't know what I'd give to get back into my first <coughs> car just to drive it one more time with. Well, hold on. That was your first car, the Grand Prix? No, it was a Mercury Mystique. <laughs> it didn't last very long. The head gaskets blew, but... A what was it now? Mercury uh, the Mercury? Mystique. Mercury's not even it around was, anymore. I know, it was just a little car. It was like grayish blue. Grayish blue. It lasted <laughs> a few months and head gaskets busted, but I had a, <laughs> I put a stereo in there and it had the screen things and... Did you have subwoofers? No, I oh wasn't that God. cool. You weren't that cool, huh? That was my brother. He did all that. Uh, those are great. I, I still love subs. But now every car comes with a good stereo. You don't yeah. even need to do that anymore. But I remember you, the bigger you had and the, the, the cooler you were, and then it, the more your windows rattled. I know. Then it was then it was neat, yeah. I remember snow would shake off my car after I would have them. Because <laughs> I would have Alpine. The first ones I had were Alpine Type S's. And then those were pretty good, but then there was the Alpine Type R's, and then that was like, whoa, you have a really nice system. And then they came out with X's, and I had a buddy in high school. He worked at the local um, place. It was called Audio Design, still around. Yep. And they had he put in the Type X's because he worked there. He probably got a discount, so he put the Type X's in. He turned it up, and once the bass hit, his rearview mirror went from here to down to here. It just kind of shook and just went Loop, like that, and I was like... <laughs> It's going to ruin your windows or something's going to happen. Yeah, I was wondering if somebody's windows are just going to bust. Well, I was wondering if it loosened up parts inside the car. It had to, if I would Could think have, of yeah. it. Loosen up parts. So, oh, I don't even, I can't even tell you what a Mercury Mystique looks like. I, off I'll top have of to head. Google it. I guess I'll have to Google <laughs> what a Mercury Mystique looks like. Mm -hmm. So then, okay, so you said it only lasted months? Yeah. Had gaskets blue? Mm -hmm. Dad didn't want to fix it? Well, actually, no, he did want to fix it, but. Of course he did. <laughs> Yeah, I was fix it all. Um, the mechanic said that I'd have to get a whole new engine. It was worth more than the car. Yeah, that'd so. be like three thousand dollars probably, mm -hmm. and the car's not even worth that. Yeah, the car was like twenty five hundred, maybe two. So then, what was the next car then? And did it last longer? Uh, yeah, that was my Grand Prix, and it lasted a really long time. What year was the Grand Prix? Ninety five, I think. Okay, that's about yeah, about the style yeah. people were coming. In. And then I had that until I got. Um, until I got my Pontiac G6. Ah, uh, the G6, yes. Yeah. Those were another popular one, too. Yeah, that was a nice car. That was, well, that, that was your nicest one you've ever had? Ever? No. Yeah. Just as a teenager, yes. Yeah. And then after that, I only had that for a little bit. Um, but then I got a, um, a Volkswagen Jetta. Sweet. I loved that car. You, know, you loved it, huh? I remember yeah. that was your red one, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. That's when we first started dating. Yep. I remember your dad would want to keep fixing it and keep fixing it. I'm like, I don't think it's worth what you're putting into it, but <laughs> by all means. Well, his theory is that if you have something that has good structure, why get rid of it? Just keep fixing it and taking care of the things that you have. Now, was the Volkswagen a really good structured vehicle? I mean, at first, at first and then yeah. it, it lasted so long. But I only paid like 2000 for that car. Right. So eventually we probably tripled. <laughs> you put like 6000 <laughs> into it? I mean, over time because I had it a long time. But And then after that, I, I had to put my foot down at the last fix. And I said, all right, time for something else. Yep. And then I had a um, Toyota Camry. 
Sure. That was a good car. Well, I grew up on Camrys because that was what my mom always had all the way from when I was little till when I was in about college. She turned over to the Venza. Mm-hmm. But, you know, can't go wrong with the Toyota. Those things will pretty much last until... It just wasn't good with hills and drive steep driveways. Yeah, that's right. Winter and... Because that one was only for, uh, front-wheel drive, right? Mm-hmm. It didn't have all... Some of them have all-wheel. So winter in the north is not good with those types. Yeah, of and our stuff. last house didn't help out the matter either. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to go up. So going back to the Grand Prix... So this is a great story. <laughs> this is the one where my buddy and I, we traveled from Iowa to Detroit, Michigan to go to the 2009 Royal Rumble. And it was in his Grand Prix. And we we're so amped up to go because we're like, yes, we're going to see all of our, you know, childhood superstars from wrestling. And this is WWE, of course. And so is we this got where you got the chair. This is where I got the chair. Okay. Yes. So. Uh, it's a Saturday, no, Sunday morning. I took off my, I didn't even go to class on Monday because we were in college and I met my buddy at, um, we worked together at the, um, cafeteria. So anyways, he learned that I was big into wrestling. And so what we did is we bought the tickets and we're like, okay, we'll leave. If we leave at this time on Sunday morning, we'll get there like an hour or two before showtime. Perfect. That works. Well, Detroit's like eight hours away from Mm -hmm. Iowa. And I went to school at University of Northern Iowa. So we're calling from Cedar Falls, Iowa to Detroit. And from there, we um, proceed to hit a ice patch about two hours out of our trip. Right about Iowa Falls area. Or no, not Iowa Falls. I'm sorry. Iowa City. And we hit an ice patch going on this bridge and uh, as you know bridges freeze over before highways do because there's because of the ground and all that so anyways we hit an ice patch we did a 360 in the middle of a highway i don't know if it was a highway or interstate i can't remember off the top of my head we (laughs) we're going we hit an ice patch we do a 360 i remember as we turned i'm looking at head-on traffic coming as we're spinning and then we proceed to go down about a 10-foot ditch and i'm like that's scary. It it was. You think back on it, it was, but it wasn't that bad. It was kind of like, glad it wasn't my car. But <laughs> I'm like, holy cow, this is this just really happen? And my second thought was, we're not going to make it to the Royal Rumble now for sure because we're in a ten foot embankment. We just hit the guardrail too because we not only did we do a full spin, we slammed in the guardrail and then went down. So we call up a tow company. They come and they. Take, you know, they put the chains on, they drug us up, <clears throat> and then they took us to the local Walmart. <laughs> what? I don't know how the local Walmart got us fixed back up to get us back on the road, but they did. Mm-hmm. However, we had no headlights and one bright light that was <laughs> that was dangling out of it. <laughs> so <laughs> we're going down. You know, we're going down the highway, the interstate, still going. We're trucking on. I mean, we were probably at Walmart for an hour. So we got all fixed up, enough to at least get the car back on the road. We're flying down, and all of a sudden, you can see, like, pieces of the car kind of, like, flapping in front of us <laughs> as we're going down the interstate. All of a sudden, we're sitting there, and he goes, all of a sudden, one goes, poof, and he sits there and flaps like this. It was on his side, and I felt bad because his car was <laughs> just in total pieces. I'm like, oh, my gosh, do I laugh at this? I don't even know. As eventually, it goes, poof, and it shoots up into traffic. <laughs> we just kept going. That's dangerous. Luckily, there was really nobody behind us. I looked back in the rearview mirror. I'm like, did that just really happen? And I'm busting out laughing. So we proceed to move on. And um, as you know, it's the Royal Rumble's in January. So we're on, you know, the daylight savings time. At that point, it gets dark at about five Mm -hmm. and we didn't really take that into consideration so we're like "Uh uh-oh we don't have any headlights all we have is one bright light dangling out of it and so what we do is we stopped at a (laughs) local truck stop we proceeded to buy some led flashlights and we taped them into the front of the car and we turned them on and we drove like that for about another two hours to Detroit. We never got picked up on the way there. We had one so bright say, light. Did the police stop you at all? No one picked us up wow. yet. <laughs> so we, I said, turn on your bright. <laughs> so we had one bright dangling on the passenger side and a flashlight in the middle. So we get there. 
we missed, I think, the first two matches. So we had to get there like 7.30 is about when we rolled up. Go to the show. Had a great time. Fantastic time. Got my chair, obviously. We get back into the car. We're driving out of town. We're, well, we're trying to get through all the traffic that's going on downtown Detroit. And one of the police officers that was directing traffic says, roll down your window. And we roll it down. And he goes, uh, this isn't legal. How far are you guys going? We go, oh, our hotel is just down the couple blocks. He's like, oh, okay. He's like, we'll just go. No, we kept going for another two hours out of town until we found a hotel that was out of Detroit, Michigan. And uh, that was in a Grand Prix. And that thing came all the way back. I still have photos of us when we came back because people were laughing at us when we pulled back up to college. And um, that was a memory that I'll always, <laughs> I'll always remember. And eventually his car was obviously totaled. So yeah. he got his insurance money. But, man, that was one heck of a trip to Detroit, Michigan for wrestling just in the Grand Prix. Wow. Uh, yep. So do you have any good stories like that? I feel like you do. <laughs> I feel like you do have a good one. Um, no, not really. Not to that magnitude. Not even with your dad, mom? No. No? Mm -mm. Well, no, that's not true. Okay. Uh oh. So my mom had, um, God, I don't know the name of these SUVs. It was, a, I think it was a, not a Mountaineer, but it was. That's what she has now, is the Mountaineer. That's what she had now, but I think it was a, it was a Jimmy. GMC? Yep, GMC Jimmy? had a Jimmy. It was, okay, like a, it was the blazer, basically, of yeah, Chevys. It was like a, a Jimmy. Okay. Um, well, me and some school friends, we used to do like this water balloon tag in our cars mm. in um, Todd Park. So you'd chase each other in cars and you'd do ma throw these massive water balloons at each other. Sometimes people would fill them with like colored stuff and it would not be good for the vehicles anyways. Wow. So it's a lot of starting and stopping and starting and stopping in these different areas. Well, I dropped the tranny in my mom's Jimmy and ruined it and cost her fifteen, fifteen hundred dollars $1,500. Well, that's what I was thinking. How did yeah. you do that? All the starting and stopping and starting and stopping. Oh, you're putting it out of gear? Yeah. Oh, why? To reverse it. Oh, I see what you're saying. Gotcha. Yeah. I thought you meant like you were just going and I stopping. I didn't know at the time that that was hard on the engine. Oh, yes. It's very and hard on it. Especially if you're not fully stopped or fully out into a gear or fully in a position. I would change it really fast because, and then, you know, the, you have music blaring and you're not paying attention. And needless to say, that was a learning experience. Well, what was this game you were playing? I, I don't know. We were just doing like this tag thing with water balloon stuff. And there was just a lot of starting and stopping in the, this park with their, our cars. In Todd Park mm -hmm. in Austin. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, I remember hearing this big thud. <laughs> and a friend, a guy friend that was in the back seat goes, yeah, you just dropped your tranny. I go, oh, no, this isn't my car. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, needless to say, I never drove my car mom's car around like well, that. What did she ever. say when you got home? I got grounded. Well, I don't of remember, course. But I don't remember for how long. I feel like I would have got smacked I'm sure up. I made up some lie about why it happened. Yeah, some guy just went underneath yeah. and screwed it and just dropped it down. That was I'm it. I'm sure I just, like, <laughs> I slammed it into gear too wrong and it just dropped. I don't know what happened. Like, I'm sure I gave some lie. <laughs> that's good. Well, that's yeah. it. You have That's any other? You have any other good stories? Um, I have one. Then I have one that kind of relates to the, you guys are playing games, right, with the cars? Yeah. Well, okay. So one time, my friends and I. I'm in ninth grade. No, sorry, tenth grade. And I was one of the first ones to get my license because we both our birthdays are twelve days apart. Mm -hmm. So you know how that was. You had your license like right when tenth grade started. So myself, I had that too, and I had a uh, Jeep Grand Cherokee, like an O2. And anyways, my friends and I were down at the McDonald's downtown here that's now recently closed. So we're sitting there, we're eating, and then all of a sudden, we, cut, we see a car drive by slow, and they threw an egg at my car. Splattered it. I'm pissed because I'm a car guy, and I don't like my stuff all sorts of dinged up. Eggs can leave residue marks if you don't clean them off right away. So anyways, I'm pissed. And my friends and I are like, let's go to Midtown, which is our local grocery store. Like, let's go buy some eggs. And he goes, I know that he keeps driving around downtown, so we'll get him back. So we go in and we buy two dozen eggs from the local grocery store. Downtown, there's a 
bus stop for the public trans- uh, transportation system, we hid out in there and we parked my car somewhere else. And we knew because he had a bright red two-door Jeep Wrangler going up and down the streets. We knew it was just a matter of time. We see it pull up to the, the four-way stop just in front of it. As he starts creeping by, about five or six of us come out with 12, 24 eggs, and we just murdered his car with eggs. And that was the last time they ever came by. And then we saw him at school the next week. He's like, oh, that was you guys, are, you did such a good job. He's like, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to ruin your car. I wasn't trying to do that. We're just you know, being funny. And I'm like, yeah, no problem. So were we. Mm-hmm. 24 eggs at the side of his red Jeep now. So we did that. And that's uh, I was I was ticked at first, and I, cause I didn't really know who he was. He, he became somewhat of a friend of mine eventually, but I didn't really know who he was that well. So I I'm pissed. I'm just thinking that this is just some you know asshole screwing with me, which kind of was. But he didn't have any ill intentions really. But we got him back, and that was fun. <laughs> so, so um, your dad didn't have any good stories with the cars. Well, you'd have to get him on here. Gotta, gotta get him on here. Yeah, gotta oh, get all these man. people on your podcast and get him to spill. Well, I could I could spill some stuff. You know, Hurley and I we took the car his dad's car out when we were fourteen years old. We didn't have a license. I think I've heard this one. Yeah, I bet question. you have. His this dad had this '89 Buick, and we would I would stay over at his house and. They went to bed early and they were heavy sleepers. So then it, I was in eighth grade and he was in ninth grade. So we're both about 14 years old ish. We don't have our permit at all. Let, need, needless to say, we obviously don't have our uh, we don't have a driver's license. But we took his dad's car at about four in the morning and just started driving around in the middle of winter. Neither one of us had a license or anything. If we'd have got caught, we'd have been in huge trouble. But they never did. One time, Louis lit off fireworks on the back of that car too. Oh goodness! He lit off some black, Good some ones. black cats. Yeah, he lit, he lit off black cats right in the back. And Brett's dad heard about that and was so mad at Louis. Yeah, so I mad. I would be too. Well, then Brett's brother bought a transit bus, the old transit buses that we used to have here in town. He bought it for like five hundred bucks from the police auction when they were getting the new ones in. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> him and his friend and Brett, they all spray painted it black with spray paint from like Walmart, Target, wherever it was from. Yeah, have another one. Have another one. No? So I hate to change the subject, but what is it about this beer that you like? Well, I like th- I like that it tastes like an IPA kind of. See, I'm a big IPA guy. And this one tastes like an IPA. I mean, it's an ale, so that makes sense because IPA is Indian Pale Ale. Mm-hmm. But this one tastes like, like, again, it's like Christmas in a bottle. It's kind of piney to me. Yep. I like the pine. It's 7.1% alcohol, which is quite a bit That's for big one for, bottle of beer. Well, that's big for an ale because when I think of an ale, I think of maxing out about 5.5%. Yeah. Not 7.1%. But if you go to breweries, I suppose it's pretty standard if you... Yeah, if anybody's ever been to Breckenridge Brewery, leave a comment below and let us know what it's like there. I've never been to Breckenridge Brewery at all, let alone Breckenridge in itself. I have been to Breckenridge. What did you do there? Well, I drove through. Oh, <laughs> I did <laughs> drove through. I did eat lunch at. Did a you place. go here? No, I did oh, not. I didn't it. know they had a. They didn't have that, but um, I was there. I went to Vale, and then we just drove through Breckenridge and. It was actually kind of, the city looks like a Christmas card. It's very pretty. Well, yeah, um, were you going to Vail or something, you said? Yeah, my cousin got married in yeah. Vail. And um, us just driving, we were like, oh, let's go check out Breckenridge. And we went and had lunch there, and it's kind of like a Christmas postcard there in the winter. It's just it's very beautiful with the mountains and the stores and it's just definitely a bucket list thing i think people need to go check out i definitely didn't know they had a brewery but it, do- it definitely makes sense well yeah for sure i'm mean, colorado has tons of them i'm almost certain mm-hmm. i think this is where matt goes and does he goes snowboarding once a year yeah usually so i mean it's obviously probably got breweries as well which is what i absolutely love to do mm-hmm. so anyways going back to brett and his t-bus uh, and his brother, it was hilarious because it was this giant, but well, not giant bus. It was not a, it was like a short bus basically. And it had a wheelchair ramp on it. 
you know, so you, when they stopped, the wheelchair ramp came out, you lowered it down with the button, the handicapped person got on, raised it back up to come in. So anyways, his brother's driving it down the street one day, and we're on like a, not a busy road, it's down by the lakes, and Brett goes, hey, check this out. Pushes the button. He goes and steps out on it while we're while they're driving. He goes, check this out, I'm surfing. He pushes the button, starts going up and down and up and down. It was so funny. He got really low to the road. I'm like, we hit one bump. You're going to be gone. Yeah. And then they had couches in the back. And, man, they got stopped so many times by the cops but never really got in trouble ever. It was just fully black. And then the little white areas that were still white, they put, obviously, number 69 on it. Because why would you not put 69 on it? That was the number the bus was. was when was your first speeding ticket? Ooh. I can tell you when mine was. I was 16. First week, I had my driver's license. First week? Yep. How fast in what zone? I think it was going, it wasn't too fast. It was, I think, 45 and a 30. Yeah, I, was trying to f- I was trying to follow my friend Delta. Um, she was zooming out to the mall, and we tried to keep up. And But I was the car behind, so I was the one that got stuck. But yeah, was it in your first week? First week. What'd they say to you? I said, didn't you just take your driver's test? <laughs> Did you learn like, anything? You, don't you know you're not supposed to do this? <laughs> and they're like, yeah. So needless to say, it was a long time until I got another one. But How many have you had in your life? I don't know. Maybe. Too many? One, two no, many. not too many. <laughs> maybe like three, four. Oh, that's about what I've had, too. Yeah. I want to say I've had over, three. Over, what? 16 to 35. I feel well, like you're talking about that. 20 years right now. Yeah. You're not 35. You're 36. I'm 30, okay, it's 36. Yeah. Oops. That's right. People tell us we look younger, so that's it's all true. good then. So, yeah, we've been driving for 20 years, which seems I forget crazy. I I'm getting closer to 40 than I am to 30. <laughs> I think my speeding ticket was about the same speed as yours. I think I was going 43, but it was going down a downhill slope, and those cops would sit at the bottom of this downhill slope up by my parents' house. And they would catch people because obviously when you're going down, unless you're braking, you're going to keep going faster. I think I would got a 43 and a 30. And I was like, oh, man. I went to work that night and paid it off as fast as I could. Mm-hmm. But I've had, I think, about the same amount of speeding tickets. Have you ever had a no- loud noise violation? No, because oh. I didn't have <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have subwoofers. Oh, I got one. No, I didn't I had have subwoofers. That. They stopped me for that. I did not. I, yeah. No. $75 ticket. How annoying. I went and paid it off right away. Don't worry. It went in the newspaper. My dad saw it. He's like, what's this? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I got a loud noise violation. He's like, well, when did you have to pay it by? I'm like, I paid it that day. I literally went down there and paid it. Mm-hmm. I didn't even question it. I just went down and paid the $75. It was annoying. I tell you what, though. Now, nowadays, I don't know of anyone that's ever had a loud noise violation, but speakers aren't really a big thing anymore. Mm-hmm. I don't even know what you get one for. A loud exhaust? I didn't think anybody would pull you over for that anymore. I don't know. Cops don't like that. Another one that I get pulled over for is having no front license plate. That's a stupid rule. No front license plate. Who the cops chasing me in reverse? Like, what do you need the, my front one on for? Because some mean, states yeah, don't. I agree with that. Well, some it states does don't take have away it. from the front end of some cars. I know it does. Yeah. Looks ridiculous. Like the Ford Shelby. If I put a front license plate on that, it looks gonna look stupid. I don't even have a bracket for it. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. I don't agree with that one. I, the back obviously makes sense. Yes, I mean motorcycles don't have them. Why is a car needed? Well, the other thing is, I saw something recently about how on a motorcycle it can't your license plate can't flip up. Oh yeah, it can't be tilted up. Why? Well, it's probably harder to see. Because if you're looking at it from an angle that's like this and your words are right here, it'd be harder to see. See, now on crotch rockets, that's like the only place where people do that. Because I had brackets like that. I never got stopped for it, however. Mm -hmm. But I also made sure that there was a light shining on it to make sure that you could see the numbers and the letters, per se. So it wasn't like they had to search for it. But if they are crammed way up under there like this and you can't read the letters... That's where it becomes a problem because they can't read your license plate. And then it's just a reason for them to stop you. Right. So anyways, yeah, now, you know, it, it doesn't make sense that a car would have to have a front one if a motorcycle doesn't have to have a front one. But I don't know. That's just my thoughts on that. 
Nobody's chasing me in reverse. I suppose. Well, I mean, they could be if I got into big trouble, but they're not. I don't know. I don't. I don't get it. I feel like your dad picked up a a, a young lady one time in a in a car in a is station it, did wagon. Did he tell you this story? Or uh, I think you told me the story I once. I did. This is a good one, though. Well, what was it? A station wagon? Yeah, that's um, hot. It's a hot car. I mean, we grew up <laughs> with them. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I think it was the middle of winter. It was a blue something station wagon and. <laughs> Did it have any wood panels on it, like the family I truckster? So. Yeah, I believe so. Was it the family truckster? Yeah, it was. Cl- it was close. It was a little bit rounded, more in the back versus squared. Ooh, that you know that sounds like that sounds like a Crown Victoria, a Ford Crown Vic station wagon. Yeah, I don't know. I just, mm. I can kind of picture it. It wasn't squared off. It was more rounded. That sounds like a Crown and, Vic. Um, it was middle of winter. I don't know why we were in the car. Who was we? My brother and I. We were in the back. <laughs> And then my dad was driving, obviously, and we were in the far. So there must have been two rows because we were in the way back for some reason. And um, he, pu- he, we were driving downtown in Austin and he um, he saw this young lady that was wearing. I remember her having a fur coat and um, she was on the corner of something. I know it sounds really bad. But, <laughs> was um, she a hooker? No, I don't. No, I don't think so. But yeah. um he pulled over and he was talking to her and all of a sudden she got in the car and I was like, um, <laughs> what's talking, going like on? looking at my brother, like what's going on here? Um, and all he did was drive like three blocks down and then drop her off. I mean, it was literally was was, a uh, interaction that lasted minutes, if not seconds. And I went from a couple blocks down, picked her up, dropped her off. And, it took me i mean my brother and i remembered it for years and it took me a long time to ask the courage to be like who is this lady but then i remembered where he dropped her off at (laughs) and when i was older i'm like this is the road this is the road where he dropped her off and needless to say needless to say it was um a strip joint so my guess is that you can say strip joint on here she was a working lady oh she was a working lady of the night of not of the night in like that sense, but oh, good, of the good. dancing type. Of the dancing type. So yeah. she wasn't working at Hormel for spam. No. That's but good. It took me many years to figure out this story because <laughs> he wasn't very honest. And now we laugh about it and it's funny. And Well, yeah, your dad's one of those guys that has a hard time saying no. So yeah. he probably saw someone sitting he out He saw freezing. this young lady in a fur coat and bare legs and I'm sure he was like, she's cold. Well, Probably. Where does she need to go? So. What was the club called? Uh. You remember? Well, in my older years, it was called Paradise Island, Paradise, Ooh. I think. But I don't know if it was something different back then. Yeah. It could have been, but it could have been this. How old were you? I don't know exactly. I would guess like eight to ten. Eight to ten years old. Some, somewhere in there. Sitting in the back seat, wondering what's going on. Mm. It was dark out. I suppose. Was it after hours or was she going to her shift? Well, I'm guessing she was going to work. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So needless to say, station wagons Uh. have lots of funny stories. Do you think she could have cut glass that night? Cut glass? Oh, um, (laughs) I mean, maybe. I don't know. I guess I didn't really think about that, but it was just funny. So let's transition into uh, now. Now you don't have any cycles anymore. You've since mm-hmm. sold them all because you told us that you had back issues. But yeah. you've been riding with me now for the last couple of years. Correct. So is there a difference now from riding to being a passenger? Is it easier oh, on your yeah, back? Yeah, of course. If you have a, a motorcycle that just is different. I mean, it's a totally different style. Um, yours is, I think, m- meant for more like touring rides yeah touring um versus sportster sure. lower to the ground well, not really meant for comfort my your seats are very comfortable okay you got me a backrest which is nice you know, always do didn't have that before always so. do so yeah. it's so the it's actually more comfortable being a passenger on my bikes than actually riding your old ones my old ones 100 yeah. percent. okay yeah. Maybe you just needed a street glide or something. 
I probably, I'm sure. So we've um, now I've since uh, we've been doing all these riding things together. I've had an Indian uh, chieftain, and then I have the new Harley Street Glide CVO. Mm-hmm. Is there a difference between your different ridings or not? Is it, it is, was one more comfortable than the other, or they seem about the same? They're pretty similar. Pretty similar, yeah. I think, I don't know. I would say the like the backrest and the actual seat was probably a little bit bigger and a little more comfortable on the Indian. Yeah. But I think the ride might be a little bit different on the CVO. Okay. So apples to apples, I don't know. Yeah, it's probably you're not comparing anything too different. Yeah. Because we just went on what two? They're both fant- They were both fantastic. They're, yeah. I like them both equally. Well, we just went. I think I like the look of one a little bit more than the other. Oh. But mm, which one was that? I think I I still like the look of your Indian. Just like the Indian. Yeah. But I think the co- like the like the resale value and the this I don't. They both have their good qualities. They do, they do, they so do. So it's hard to say one bad thing about the other. No, I'm, I, like I, I don't. I have nothing bad to say about the Indian. I have nothing bad to say about the Harley. I yeah. like them both. I just the only issue for me was the. I think I like the front end of, um, the Indians more. Oh really? The look was a little bit yeah. girthier, stockier, versus Boom. the CVO is a little more slender. Sure. Well, it it's it, this new one does weigh a little bit less now. A little bit less. I'm talking like 20 pounds. So, but there's like things about this I like. I mean, you have that storage drawer that's yeah. pretty cool. I mean, both have a key fob, which was crazy to think about that a motorcycle has a key fob. Yeah, but I like the heated hand grips. That was great because two weeks nice. ago we were going through 57 degree weather, and yes, you were on the back all bundled up, but you my hands felt fantastic. Well, it was when we stopped. <laughs> Not going down the interstate. Oh, I was but struggling. my hands were warm. I was struggling. Yeah, that was a rough one. Mm-hmm. That was, um, you know, thing is, like I, like I said, I have nothing bad to say about Indian or Harley. The only thing for us is that the Harley dealers, we have two of them within 30 minutes to 45 minutes of us. And when I had any sort of Indian-specific maintenance, like a recall, I didn't have anywhere to go besides uh, Chippewa Falls, which is roughly an hour and 25 minutes away from here. So when I had to do those things, it was like an all day event and it just wasn't it wasn't easy to do when I had recalls on stuff. And I had multiple recalls on the bikes that I had and I have one right now in the Harley. Um, So in the spring, I'll go down and I'll go and take it to most likely on Alaska lacrosse, Wisconsin, uh, that Harley dealership down there. But so easy i go down there it'll be done and i'll be back in a couple hours rather than a whole day gone Mm -hmm. so i that's one thing i enjoy about that the one thing i really uh miss from the indian actually was the saddlebags that i had on that one that one had um the saddlebags were a little bit deeper and what i mean by deeper is they went over the exhaust a little bit so things would go down further into it yeah um so i kind of miss that portion a little bit but i would say like the opening of the harley saddlebags is a lot easier yeah like the lock is just literally right there yeah on the cbo and then they open and you can shut them nicely yeah i think it wasn't as easy on the indian for that of what i remember yeah horse apiece um, i guess so yeah apples to apples i like that the speakers are in the saddlebags too not that i couldn't have gotten it on the indian because they do sell that mm-hmm. but i like the speakers and this one has Gosh, I don't even know what the amps, just from the factory, it's like 500 watt amp system. And the other one was only 100 watt. And so I like my music when I ride. Now, I never knew, I ne- you know, when I first got into cycles, I'm like, oh, I'm never going to get a cruiser. And then when I got a cruiser, I'm like, oh, I'll never get one with a fairing on it. And here I am now with the Harley CVO. Mm-hmm. But um, I've really enjoyed that because it's a lot more enjoyable when the wind's not beating on your chest, on your face as much. It makes it a lot more mm-hmm. enjoyable to ride around. And I never thought I would like that at all. I thought they always kind of look, wow, they just never look good to me. And now that I have one, I would never go back the other way. My dad just got his Harley Fat Boy, and that's the hundred uh, what is it, the hundred and twenty fifth anniversary. Okay. And that one is really it's a sharp looking bike. That is a 
No, 120th anniversary. I'm sorry. 120th. No, that's 120th because 1903 to 2023. That's 120. So anyways, that one doesn't have a fairing on it either, but it's probably going to be more of a de- garage display piece rather than anything else. But I'm happy now that I just got one bike, one maintenance issue, and that is it. That's all I need is one maintenance issue. So I'm happy with that. But, you know, when Justin and I took that trip down to Milwaukee, I kind of fell in love with the whole the whole background of Harley and the history of it. You know, we went down to the Harley Museum and that was a fun trip. So I was at the Harley Museum with my Indian, which was fun. And then I sat on the CVO and I'm like, kind of fell in love with it. But there are things from each one that's good and bad, you know, in yeah. everyone's preference. So anyways, um, anything else you want to discuss? Any other uh, types of car stories or beer stories you have? I'm sure you have beer stories. Oh, I think we should save those for another day. <laughs> for another one, just the yeah. beer tales? Beer tales on another day. Well, then I want to thank you for coming on and being my first guest ever on the Brews and Cruise podcast. It's been fun talking. I don't know how long we've been talking for, but that's okay. Yeah. So I can talk all day to you. Well, yeah. You're my new bride from two months now. Oh, my goodness. So anyways, this is Brews and Cruise. I am your host, Chris Jacobson, and we will see you next week. Cheers. Cheers.